Get ready for some brooding and bad attitudes. Well, I may be super, but <laughs> I am no hero. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Troped, the series where we deconstruct the cliches, archetypes, and story devices that won't go away. In this episode, we're taking a look at anti-heroes, protagonists who lack many of the common characteristics associated with heroism. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. Some of the key characteristics of traditional heroes are bravery, mercy, selflessness, intellect, and strength. Anti-heroes tend to have some, but not all, of these features. They might be brave but not selfless, or strong but not merciful. They do heroic stuff because said heroic stuff is in keeping with their own interests or self-preservation, and not because it's the right thing to do, or because they feel a sense of great responsibility as a result of their great power. Hear me out! I don't care about the people of Earth, but I promise I will destroy Cell! While anti-heroes are more popular and common now than they've ever been, this archetype comes from a long tradition stretching as far back as ancient Greece. From Odysseus in the Odyssey to Don Quixote to Hamlet and Macbeth, there's always been an appreciation for heroes whose flaws prevent them from fitting the traditional mold. Odysseus struggles and makes mistakes where classical heroes would have triumphed. He's not the best fighter, he's arrogant, and he's really, really bad at keeping his men alive. No! The anti-heroes of old were all about defeating the obstacles within themselves in spite of their flawed nature. The history of cinema is filled with compelling and dramatically different kinds of anti-heroes, from the film noir detectives of the 40s and 50s to Clint Eastwood's Man With No Name from Sergio Leone's Dollars Trilogy, who stands as the prototypical spaghetti western anti-hero. I want you to stand up there and put your head in that noose. Because of the rise of nerd culture and its collision with the mainstream, a lot of people's mental image of an anti-hero today probably comes from comic book characters. The Punisher is an example that recently re-entered the public consciousness in a big way with the release of Season 2 of Netflix's Daredevil. This interpretation of the character cleverly deconstructs and challenges the notion of the anti-hero, as John Bernthal's Frank Castle presents both a physical and moral obstacle for the devil of Hell's Kitchen. You know what I think, you hero? I think you're a half-measure. I think you're a man who can't finish the job. And then there's Deadpool. Oh, hello. The Merc with the Mouth is as fast-talking and witty as he is sadistic and cruel. Luckily, his victims tend to be pretty bad people. What distinguishes Deadpool in this tradition is the pure joy and glee with which he disposes of the bad guys. Oh. I'm touching myself tonight. Outside of comics and the superhero genre, the next haven for anti-heroes these days is prestige television. Think of the big TV dramas of the last two decades. Consider that for almost all of them, the main characters tend to be pretty bad people. You know who I am, and you know what I do. From a cold and calculated school teacher turned drug lord, to a pill-popping nurse, to a family man slash mob boss, to a womanizing alcoholic who doesn't say thank you, to a nihilistic undercover cop, to an actual serial killer. The best shows of the last decade have been centered around broken individuals motivated by their own self-interest who have little issue breaking the rules to get what they want. You probably wouldn't want to be friends with these people, but man, are they fun to root for. You're goddamn right. Who wants to watch stories about perfect people? What does the 21st century version of a classical hero even look like? Heck, even Superman is all dark and gloomy these days. The rapid rise in the number and variety of characters who fit the definition of anti-hero is a reflection of a culture that's bored with knights in shining armor. If they aren't presented with some kind of ironic wink, they just end up feeling dishonest and old hat. But the other guys, the lovable losers and the criminals with hearts of gold, these characters feel real. Their internal conflict feels real. They're interesting because they're both believable and unpredictable. While the line between hero and anti-hero is thin, in most cases, a hero always does the right thing, so it's pretty easy to predict their next move. But an anti-hero? They keep you guessing. So what do you think? Is there room in pop culture for more traditional heroes? Or have anti-heroes taken over for good? Wish there was me in there. Giving the beating or taking it. Want more from Watch Mojo? Check out other great clips on our YouTube channel and be sure to take a look at our special feature of the top 100 movie moments of the 90s.